I told God years ago when when you know when things start coming around again the way it, you know used to be um, and having these 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 triumphs and these blessings I am going to stop and acknowledge it and 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 smell the flowers Hi, Lenny Kravitz. Hello, you? good morning. How are you? I'm amazing. I'm so glad to chat with you. Um, obviously, you are such an like incredible part of music and the culture. So it's just an honor to chat with you. Um, I love to start my interviews by asking, besides your name, can you share, right. and what you do, the obvious, can you share who are you and one of the most things one of the things that you love most about who you are as a person who do i believe that i am i'm a child of god you know i'm an artist i'm i'm here to amplify love through music i love that you do that and you do it very well um what do you believe that you love most like what is the quality of yours that you love most Gratitude is one of them. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely grateful every day, just, just to wake up, to have life, mm -hmm. you know, um, health, you know, the rest of it, you know, is a very beautiful and interesting game that, that we play on this earth. But, um, I am just grateful to wake up every day and, um, I'm glad that that I'm able to have that because I think when you are grateful, um, you enjoy this ride so much more. It's so much more fun mm -hmm. to actually uh, be full of gratitude. How did you mm -hmm. get to that point? Because you've had a, a beautiful life uh, as far as we know and that you've shared. Um, and mm -hmm. a lot of the times when you do have a beautiful life like that, it, like you said earlier, it, it is a, a tough thing to stay in gratitude. How do you think you've managed to do that? I think by the examples of, of those that came before me and my family, mm -hmm. you know, starting with my grandfather, um, how hard they worked, how humble they were how grateful they were um how they put family first mm. um and just respecting their journey all that it took you know what it took for my grandfather to provide life and opportunities for my mother what she had to do for me mm. you know and now me passing that on through zoe it's a it's a beautiful journey and uh you know i grew up my mother's family is from the bahamas so that old school west indian <laughs> upbringing is very uh it's very serious you know it's all about respect and uh, honor and all of, you know, your word. Uh, and uh, so you couldn't mess around. No. You couldn't mess around no. at all. You, you, you know, respect, you know. I love that. Ms. Roxy taught you a mm -hmm. few things. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. I love that. Um, Thank you also for, for sharing that as well. I, I'm really uh, intrigued by you as a, as a human, which is also happens to be the title of your next single, um, mm. because you, you represent such a, like you're an enigma, right? Like a rock star. So sometimes it's tough to look at you and see, oh, well, yeah, he's a human. But then again, when you put on your acting hat, like you are, <laughs> you just some dude from Detroit or something, right? Like I, I feel like right. I, I see the human in you in that way. Um, so I'm curious, as someone who has all this and carries all this rock starness, what makes you feel most connected to your humanity? God, mm. you know, I, I know where I stand and I know 
where life and blessings come from. And, uh, and, and family and friends, you know, chosen family, that all keeps me ground, you know, keeps me grounded, keeps me connected. And uh, I, I, I strive for that. It's a very, it's very important to me. And, you know, I had a great example in my mother who, you know, was on a top 10 television show for 11 years, you know. I mean, that was how she ended her career. Obviously she did many things before that in theater in New York City, but by the time she'd made it in that way, where she became a household name and figure, she was a grown woman who knew who she was and she did not partake in the Hollywood sort of attitude. Right. You know, so I got to watch this woman at the height of her career and fame keep her feet glued to the ground. Yeah. Even when I didn't understand it as as, as a teenager, you know, come on, Ma, you know, you, you, you're you on a number one TV show and this and that, you know, you could be doing this and that and having this and that. And she wasn't phased by any of that, you know? Yeah. Uh, she said, it's, it's my job and uh, I love what I do, but this does not define me as a human being. It doesn't define my character. I have to look in the mirror and I have to be able to deal with that person I see in the mirror. Yeah. And so she taught me a lot of lessons just by being who she was. Come the weekend uh, after filming, you know, the Jeffersons, you know, uh, scrubbing floors, scrubbing toilets, doing laundry, doing stuff. You know, I had to get up in the morning and and work and do things and 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 contribute to the household. You know, but but she was adamant that this is the way she wanted to raise me. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I and I and I'm so grateful that she did. Yeah. Job job well done, mom. Job well mm -hmm. done. It's great to see how you have just remained a solid human as your, you know, star rose and, and shot into the atmosphere and everything. It's like, you still remain so humbly you. I don't know how to describe that. It just feels like you could, you could be the same way that you try to tell your mom doing this and doing that and being here and being there. So it's really awesome to see that that is generational. What, what makes you feel most free? Making music. Mm. When I make music, I, there's no time, there's no space, uh, and it's and it's beautiful. It, the the everything goes away, right? And it's all about um, making these sounds that I hear in my head. I'm just an antenna. I I I hear what's floating around me, That's really cool. and then it's my job to then take that and use all the different instruments that I play to put that down and 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 make it how I hear it, you know? You know, when I'm in that place, I mean, I could be in the studio for 24 hours and don't even realize that a whole day has gone by, you know? Um, you're not hungry, you're not, you know, you just, yeah, you're just working, you're just, you're, just, you're just in it, you, and it's, you kind of leave your body. It's 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 very cool. That's yeah. super powerful, especially when you look at a catalog like yours. I mean, there mm. is a lot of music there, and it is a lot of genre bending, flipping, and everything mm -hmm. going on. So you say you hear it in your head, and you go and you lay it down, and you try to get there. Do you always get there? Like, do you always? Does it always sound like what it sounds like in your head? Pretty much, yeah, yep. yeah. If not exactly. You know, 95%, you know, it's, and then, you know, there's always room for it to uh, shift a little bit, you know? Yeah. But for the most part, I get it to be how I hear it. I love that. Uh, even if I don't understand that at the moment, sometimes I think to myself, what is this? This is, yeah. you know, this is strange. What is this? Is it, this is not what I intended, you know? I mean, I never intend anything, but in a way, it's just like, it's not what, I would think, you know, a direction that I might go in. And I just continue to follow it. And when it's done, then I understand it. Hmm. 
That's mm-hmm. really dope. I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe that, you know, we have, we all have our, our purpose in this life and, it, you know, many of us get a, get a chance to discover and share those gifts and those purpose purposes maybe um, with the world. And I feel like you get to do that in your art. Can you share a story around when you first discovered that you even had this gift? Like it's one thing to be interested and to love music, but like, what if you couldn't sing? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's been a long journey because I started when I was like, you know, five, six years right. old, you know, banging on instruments. But of course I didn't, you know, I didn't know what, what that was leading to. But after I went to that Jackson 5 concert mm-hmm. in the first grade, um, you know, I knew how it affected me and I knew that I wanted to do that, but what what did that mean, you know? And then I, you know, I started playing instruments and and and, you know, my mom had me involved in things, you know, creative things in New York City where I could exercise that. Um, but I guess it really started when, when, when we moved to LA, when, when she got the show, we moved to LA, I ended up in this, in this boys choir, the California boys choir. And I had this classical career for a few years, you know, singing with the LA Philharmonic and recording with Zubin Mehta and singing with the Metropolitan Opera of New York, et cetera. I didn't foresee a, a, a career in classical music, although I used that training, you know, mm-hmm. to this day, you know, in arranging and in my sense of harmony. Um, but uh, then I graduated from that and I, you know, I was in high school and I was, you know, jamming with people and trying to find my way and, uh, but not until I got the download for Let Love Rule, my first album, did I really know where I was going? Hmm. You know, I was making music. I, I was I was recording demos for not only myself, for other people. I was playing instruments for other people. I played bass in one band or I played drums in another band, guitar in another band. Um, but I was searching. So I still didn't know what it was going to be. You know, I, I always said that I wanted to be a musician. I never said I wanted to be famous. <laughs> it wasn't about that. I, I wanted to be a musician. So I was prepared to play in the subway, play on the street, play in a restaurant, play in a club, play in the studio. I don't know, like whatever. I just wanted to be uh, around music and playing my instrument, but I had no idea that this was coming. Ah, yeah. Um, And and Let Love Rule, as I say, was the beginning. Um, You're searching for a sound, you're searching for a vibe, you're trying all kinds of different things, and all of a sudden you you get this download and you, I started recording it, not knowing what it was, where it was taking me, why it sounded the way it sounded, um, which was a culmination of, you know, everything that I loved and listened to growing right. up. And, uh, and then there I had it. And then I still didn't know what, <laughs> you know, now what, do I, now what do I do with it? I don't have a record deal, you know? Right. I, I don't know, but then that happened. And then, you know, you put the record out and you go on the road and well, maybe, maybe that's it. One album and you're over, who knows, you know? So you just keep going and learning and figuring it all out. But it's been such a blessing. I mean, I can't believe that it's been 35 years. Incredible. The first record and I'm sitting here talking to you. You know. It's truly incredible. I, I saw a chat that you did where you talked about, you know, back in the day where you all you were doing was moving forward. Like you just explained where you're not mm. really thinking about the moment in itself more so than you're just creating and trying to push your your music. And now, 35 years later, we're at this point in your career where you are a music icon. Congratulations. Also on your People's Choice. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And, and for everything, pretty much, because you are iconic um are you still in that mode of just one foot in front of the other one new instrument one new sound or are you a lot more introspective and reflective about your actual legacy well no i'm still 
always searching for the next thing, of course. And I don't, uh, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about the past because I'm always trying to get there. But what I am doing is uh, taking the time. I'm taking the time to smell the flowers. Good. Um, where I never really did. Hmm. And I told God years ago when, when, you know, when things start coming around again the way it, you know, used to be and having these, these, these triumphs and these blessings, I am going to stop and acknowledge it and, and, and smell the flowers. And I'm doing that and I'm really enjoying it. Any little thing I stop and I take it in and I digest it. Yeah. Um, and in the past, it, it wasn't a matter of not having the gratitude. I always had that. Mm -hmm. What it was, was that I was just always trying to keep moving forward. So therefore, why sit here and, oh, you, you got this thing or this thing, or you sold this many million records. Oh, you got these awards or you did this, or you sold out these plate. And, you know, I was like, okay, great. Yeah, but I'm trying to move forward. So um, I didn't take the time to say, oh, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. <laughs> you know? um, I was just hustling, you know? I feel you. Um, so, there's added enjoyment now um, by virtue of understanding that about myself. And uh, I'm having a really good time. It's inspiring, mm -hmm. truly, even for you to just say the 35 years of, I'm almost 40 and I've been an, a journalist for now 18 years. And mm. I think about the idea of reaching that level of 35 years and doing this thing that you love so much It is really, uh, it's really special to stay in something like that and to uh, be able to actually take a moment and appreciate what you've done. Yes. Yeah. And yes. I love, even though I know the comments were bristly and media took it certain ways, but I love the idea of you wanting to have the conversation about artists like you who are expanding people's mindsets around music and black art forms and breaking barriers like you've done that throughout these 35 years and now you're just saying it's like people have taken your comments about that being like you're not being celebrated by black media hello BET um, or mm. black music organiza media organizations but you were basically saying it's time to 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 be positive and to share around people like you who are showing the world that black music is music, right? Like absolutely, it's uh, absolutely. And look, at the end of the day, you know, because at the end of the day, I enjoy sitting at the table with my people. Mm -hmm. That's how I grew up. I grew up around our people. You know, all of these pioneers and all these folks that did all this work. So you and I could be sitting here having this conversation now, you being a journalist for all these years, me being a musician. Um, that's the table that I grew up at. So, you know, I appreciate it. And, um, and yes, we have to continue to embrace the art forms that we have created and, and own them, you know? And own them. Um, Cause that's what I I love that Beyonce is as big as she is. You guys are on the same plane of. But I was just I was just gonna mention yeah. her. Look what look what she's done this week. Yeah. Right, the first black woman to be number one on the country charts. Correct? Yeah. Is that that's yeah. what it is? So, I mean, look at that, and you know, we know where all this music comes from. The music is for everyone. Exactly. The music doesn't have a color, but we know where it came from yeah. and it came from us for us and the world every color every background to enjoy exactly but it was distressing to me when young black kids would say why do you play white music right 
be, be only because I want them to understand what was invented by whom, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, don't throw it away. Understand where it came from, you know? Yeah. Know who these folks were. Know who Chuck Berry and Little Richard and Bo Diddley and, and, and Sister Rosetta Thorpe, you know, and, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, know who these folks are and what they did, yeah. where it came from, you know? That's beautiful. I feel like that mm -hmm. is the conversation and it takes someone like you to, to open up people's mindsets to have it, then by all means, keep having that mm -hmm. conversation. We appreciate your voice in that. There's so much I would love to hear from you, especially because Look at you, Lenny. Like, who knew that you would be this age with abs? Like, you've been fine your whole life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the video for TK421. But I think that because there is a digital conversation happening about, you know, ditching those 40 under 40 lists, the 30 under 30, and being this age and accomplishing, I'm curious because you being in the age that you are, um, mm -hmm. with this whole idea of championing life and career wins later in life do you did you ever feel or do you even think about that when it comes to accomplishing things by a certain age does that pressure or urgency exist in your world no no the journey is the journey um and i don't think so much in time in what in how we perceive time as humans um time is a very tricky thing um and it's moving fast yeah but uh, it's it's interesting that where I am in life, mentally, spiritually, and physically, I'm in the best shape yeah. and place I've ever been. You know, I look at pictures from 10 years ago and I look younger today. Like, I don't know what's going on, <laughs> you know? But I appreciate it. But, you know, I also take care of myself, you know? And I'm, you know, I'm serious about what I, what I, what I put in my body and what I don't put in my body, you know, um, and, and my mind, you know, that's a, that's a, that's another big part of it. But, um, I'm enjoying how everything is unfolding in God's time. That is truly because God's time is the time I want to be in. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be in my time. I want to be in God's Amen. time, you know, um, so things are happening as they're happening and um it's beautiful and it's been the whole journey's been great yeah. all 35 years has been great um and i'm just looking forward to keep to keep moving forward as you should before you leave actually with this being the first album in so long a couple of years mm -hmm. at least um so much has happened since that last album so much has happened in the world at large yeah why now especially because your music does so much to give us hope and energy uh why now with blue electric light when the pandemic hit i was two years into a tour so two years had gone by already from the raised vibration album and uh then i you know i was i, I was in the bahamas for those two and a half years or whatever it was and i was just recording and recording and so so that's two and a half years uh three and a half four and a half so that's four and a half right there mm -hmm. um and then i had to decide what music i wanted to put out because i i made about four albums worth of music and uh and then it took time to figure it out and then who am i who am i going to work with how you know how do i want to distribute this this time and so just kind of all happened in it in, it, in its own time uh so now's the time and it it, 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 it feels right and I, I can't wait to get on the road and and share the music and and be with the people that that have given me this life mm -hmm. you know the, the fans and the supporters who have given me this life and enable the music to live you know that's that's the time that I really love um, and what I love about being on the road you know the road is tough and it's a thing and but it's those hours on stage uh, with your people that, you know, makes it all worth it. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That is the end of my time with you. It's a pleasure. I will see you on the next phone call.